What's up, Schnell? Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're gonna be blasting Switzerland's mighty Celtic Frost to Mega Theron. And we're also gonna be discussing why this record is so fucking good. Yes, Morbid Tales is amazing. So is some of their later material with Monotheist. But to Mega Theron. Oh my fucking god. From this opening of Innocence and Wrath. Fuck. It's just perfect. It's everything that you want out of an extreme metal band. From 1985. And if you're a fan of, let's say, Sheer Terror, Napalm Death, and especially Obituary, you already love Celtic Frost riffs, you just don't know it. And Tom G. Warrior's vocals. The whole ooh and ugh. So many bands from Napalm Death again to Obituary who even covered the mighty Circle of the Tyrants, one of the best Celtic Frost tracks on this album. Oh my god. And it's also to me, Obituary made it their own song. Like, it's not a cover song to me. That's an Obituary song. Because nobody does it as good as Celtic Frost. Like, yeah, they took the inspiration. And yes, it technically is a cover song. But they just did it so good. They took that Celtic Frost riffage. And even some of the vocal delivery inspiration on John Tardy and made it their own and something special that is still a part of their live set today and still kicks ass. Also, this fucking cover artwork is beyond iconic. I know it's not as iconic as Morbid Tales, but I Satan by H.R. Giger, like, fucking A. One of my favorite Giger pieces, including the centerpiece, but I'll get to that in a second. There's something really, really cool here. I just have to find it real quick. There's so much stuff in here, it's insane. Like, I have one poster of the band just hanging up over there. But, uh, here's a nice, again, I Satan by H.R. Giger. Awesome poster, and it's even more cool because it gives you, well, Satan Eye, I'm sorry. But, uh, painted by H.R. Giger, 1977, but it will give you the actual, like, proportions. 100 centimeters times 70 centimeters, and this is work number 324. Awesome stuff, like, seriously. So fucking sick. And it just gets better and better, because this is a double LP when it doesn't need to be. And, oh my god, did they do a bang-up job with what they added on the bonus tracks. Because you get the Emperor's Return EP, and it's just amazing sounding. Like, you have Circle of the Tyrants, Visual Aggression, Suicidal Winds, and then Journey into Fear, which is just an Emperor's Return EP Sessions track. But then on the D side, you get... Visual Aggression, a 1988 remix, and Return to the Eve, a 1985 studio jam. But over here on the actual album, we have Innocence and Wrath, which we're listening to now, followed by The Usurper, Jewel Throne, Dawn of Megindo, Eternal Summer, Circle of the Tyrants, Beyond the North Winds, Fainted Eyes, Tears in the Prophet's Dream, and necromantical screams. All amazing, amazing stuff here by Celtic Frost. Don't mind his bow tie. It's sick. They got all this clothing at some boutique. They actually thank the place in here. Yeah, Celtic Frost is supported equi uh, That's equipment wise. Here it is. Celtic Frost clothes and image supply exclusively by boutique ripoff in Zurich, Switzerland. Additional support by Boutique Belziza, also in Zurich. And this album was recorded in memory of the great Mercury and Gemini space programs. 
and especially in the memory of Gus uh, Grissom and Apollo 1. And this was released on the Mighty Noise International Records, who also did such amazing releases like Coroner R.I.P., who used to be Celtic Frost roadies. But to Mega Theron, let's get into this bad boy. First off, I love Celtic Frost's fucking logo. We're, we are listening to the first LP, side one. And there's just so much stuff on here, like credits, road crew, all sorts of stuff. And then even the 2017 reissue credits. But the real banger in here is the book. But real quick, I want to show you one of my favorite, again, H.R. Giger artwork. This is Victory 3, printed by H.R. Giger, 1981-83. to 83. And again, the proportions, 70 centimeters times 100 centimeters. And this is work number 510. And this is very, very biomechanical and very, very H.R. Giger. If you've ever seen the original Alien, yeah, he did all that stuff. He's the reason that Xenomorph looks so goddamn erotic and fucking weird and biomechanical because that is his style and he does it better than anyone when it comes to biomechanical artwork nobody fucks with hr giger but now riff wise as you can hear and just musically this record is thrashy as hell but at the same time has all sorts of like first wave black metal subject matter and all that but when it comes to the riffs I feel like death metal took more from Celtic Frost I feel like more of an image wise the black metal scene took from Celtic Frost where musically and maybe lyrically they were also influenced a little bit but I think most of all it comes down to like the arm gauntlets and you know, some of the, like, overly evil lyrics and shit that really in influenced those bands because, as you can hear, there's way more, like, hardcore thrash and death metal influence to this album. So Megatheron's just one of those releases that, to me, is like a boat that launched a thousand other ships. But Celtic Frost, Hellhammer... They all were there first, but, you know, to Megatheron was Celtic Frost growing up a bit from the Hellhammer days and from even the Morbid Tales days up until this goddamn 1985 monster. And this book right here, it's seriously insane. You have some art for the tra uh, tragic serenades along with... Uh, the Emperor's Return artwork. Rest in peace, Martin. Awesome promo photo. I know it's kind of silly, but I feel like it's awesome. Here's one of my favorites and one of the more infamous. I'm sure most of you have seen this photo of Celtic Frost because it's fucking classic. Like, I don't know, it's just an amazing photo. Along with Tanji Warrior just fucking thrashing along with this fucking show flyer. I can't imagine how hard it was to get shows booked in Switzerland in the 80s. It was probably next to impossible, especially if you looked like you were straight out of the Lost Boys. But... Rest in peace, Martin Eric Ian, for real. Amazing, amazing dude. He didn't play on the full album, but I think he wrote some tracks, and I know he plays a lot on the uh, C and D side of things. But uh, yeah, like Jewel Throne has a uh, Martin on bass. But like, there's all sorts of cool stuff. Even though this is repeated a couple times, which I thought was weird. There's a personal view of Tomega Theron by Xavier Russell, and this repeats itself 
on a couple like of the vinyl sleeves and other stuff. It's pretty cool. And uh, here's Tom G. Warrior on stage during the World War III Festival in Montreal, Canada. So they were already getting international fucking fame by 1985. Here's another... Another image of the uh, gatefold art by H.R. Giger. Same photo, just in the middle of the book. And still just like more of Xavier Russell's very, very in-depth look at the album. Tons of promo photos. Like, I don't want to spoil all this, so I'm not. But here's a sick photo. You have Martin wearing this, like, sick vampire suit and fucking Tom Warrior doing what he does best. Getting heavy! Ooh! But for real, I fucking love Celtic Frost. Even this picture right here. Don't let that throw you off. Listen to how good this is. And again, just listen to bands like fucking Sheer Terror, Napalm Death, Obituary. They owe their whole entire careers at for some of those bands to Celtic Frost. Hellhammer. Oh my god, that's a tale for a different day. I need to pick up the um, Hellhammer discography. And I need to pick up Morbid Tales. In the Pandemonium. In the Pan... Ah, whatever the fucking album's called. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it has a sick cover of Mexican radio on it. And I want to live in Tijuana, eating barbecued iguana. But I really do need Morbid Tales and Monotheist, mostly. But I got my favorite Celtic Frost record right here. To Mega Fear on. And, like I said, this is something very special to me. Something I hold very close to my heart. As a metal fan, and just as a fan of music in general, this is killer, killer shit, and if I had to pick some favorite tracks on here, this is gonna be tough, because I feel like every track on here has just killer riffs, amazing vocals, awesome drums, a sick bass tone, it has amazing production, this is just pure Swiss gold, <laughs> but uh... Yeah, I would have to say, just the way things start off with Innocence and Wrath, Into the Usurper, Eternal Summer, Circle of the Tyrants, obviously, Tears in a Prophet's Dreams, a badass track as well, and so is uh, Beyond the North Winds, just a great fucking song. And this just, it, it comes with so much stuff, like I said, I have the one band poster over there here's all the lyrics and whatnot and again for some reason you have this again that uh xavier russell story but i'm not complaining as long as it fucking spins i'm actually having some problems with my cassette player it already broke but celtic frost to mega fear on if you have not heard this, oh my god, this is going to go into my Hall of Fame, and I'm going to actually start doing a series about records that I feel are mandatory for you extreme metal fiends out there, and To Mega Theron by Celtic Frost is just one of those early examples of extreme music and the underground just completely killing it and creating something that still sounds good almost 33 years after it was recorded. Celtic Frost to Mega Theron. This is a 2017 reissue on Noise International. And that's what we've been blasting in the background. Switzerland's Celtic Frost to Mega Theron. The um, A side of things. Hopefully you enjoyed. And as always, thanks for watching. You guys fucking rule. I'm very bummed at my insignia cassette deck. Fuck you, but you guys fucking rule. Thanks for watching. Hails.